everybody. Welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar from Receptional on specialist motor insurance. Uh, we've looked at kind of search orientation and done a bit, a little bit of, of landscape analysis, which we'll take you through. Um, but before we kick off with that, um, we'd just like to do some introductions. Um, so I have Dave Clough who, uh, joining me to, on today's call. So Dave is our head of content strategy. Um, he has over 10 years experience working in SEO. Um, previously, he was SEO manager at Argos, uh, achieving number one rankings on Black Friday deals, which is quite the achievement. Um, he's also worked across numerous sectors, including automotive, finance, retail, technology, hospitality, uh, amongst lots of others. Um, his work has earned a double award win at the Digital Experience Award, or otherwise known as the DXAs. Um, and he's also been a guest speaker at the Content Marketing Association Financial Services Forum, Financial Times, as well as speaking at Google's HQ on many occasions with us at Receptional. So we're in good, I'm in good company today. Um, and then myself, my name's Dean Rowland. I, I'm a director in the business at Receptional. So I joined Receptional back in February um, after working at uh, four of the big six over the, over the last decade or so um, in London. Um, I joined to head up new business and marketing. Um, and and found it's, it's been a brilliant six months. We've seen lots of growth here. Um, something for me that I'm interested in is people and culture. Um, so I put a lot of focus on that uh, in terms of looking after our people uh, and setting the culture, culture agenda for us as an agency. Alrighty, so let me just share my screen quickly with you all. Okay, so hopefully you should be able to see the slides all on screen now. Yep. So first things first, um, as we know, each sector presents its, its own challenges. Um, and this is especially true within the automotive industry. So there are tens of thousands of keywords in a space dominated by mainstream brands and comparison websites. But not to worry if you're not a major brand, because there's a colossal amount of non-branded searches in this space. And this also includes a vast number of long tail keywords and question and answer style searches, which lend themselves to content marketing. So keyword aside, marketers in the insurance niche must overcome obstacles such as comparison giants and competitive pricing before even thinking about how to engage with the elusive target audience of money saving customers. So these challenges are also compounded by occasionally dry subject matters, not to mention the difficulty of product differentiation in a crowded regulated market. So how on earth do we stand out against competition? So where there are challenges, there are also untapped opportunities. So to demonstrate this opportunity, Receptional has conducted this organic search market landscape analysis. And this report will go a long way to showcasing that with the right SEO strategy, then niche insurers can dine at the same table as some of the biggest players. So our research indicates that there are almost endless variations of car insurance related keywords, which then raises a question for marketers. How do you target the right keywords searched for by the right customers? So in the UK, there are 70, almost 60, 76,000 commonly used car insurance keywords. And these keywords account for 4.5 million searches every month. So this is quite an astonishing depth and variety of keywords. And that means that there's a need to be highly targeted in your search campaigns to get in, in front of the right customers. So we've reviewed how the biggest players in this market performed in the search against the keywords that customers might be asking when searching for providers. And these are some of the providers that have come up in our research. So our report summarizes our findings and reveals the biggest winners and losers in the car insurance space in terms of driving volumes of, of high quality traffic. Um, we'll, we will look at what the winners do well and how some of the lower performers can improve. So just before I hand you over to Dave, let's take a look at what we've got coming up. So firstly, we'll be looking at what your potential customers search for online. Then we will look at how firms perform against our keywords before, then we, before revealing our winners and taking a look at what specialist insurance firms can do better. And then finally, we will be covering the importance of link building. And then at the end of today's session, we will ha we'll have a chance for a Q&A. So if you do have any questions that spring to mind throughout, then please use the panel on the right hand side of your screen um, to, uh, to ask any questions. Any that we do not cover in the, in the session today, we will follow up with um, and answer your questions after the call. So with all that being said, I shall hand you over to the capable hands of Dave. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dean, and good morning, everybody. 
So genuine car insurance customers are at the heart of our analysis. We wanted to use our insights to attract new customers. So we focus on keywords that have the ability to drive the most relevant traffic. To do that, we have undertake, undertaken extensive research. We identified the key questions that car insurance customers might ask when searching for providers in this space. We then analyzed how the biggest players in the market perform against these keywords and examined their SEO setups and strategies. One of the first things we noticed is that the keyword car insurance has been on the decline over the last few years. Now, logically, that doesn't make sense. It's not like there's a significant decline in the number of cars around. So don't panic. There's actually a perfectly reasonable explanation for this trend. The data tells us that over the last decade, fewer and fewer people have searched for generic short phrases like car insurance. Now, this is true of many other keywords across many other niches. Meanwhile, we see an increase in the number of people searching for longer tail, more specific keywords. Um, for instance, questions or specific types of products and services. Uh, what this tells us is that searches are savvier and more sophisticated than ever before, which is why understanding user intent has become so important. Regular internet users know that the quality of the results they get on search engines is based on what they search for in the first place. Therefore, it's often a better strategy to target keywords where the user intent is a lot more specific and clearer, even if the search volumes are slightly lower. And we need to consider user intent. In other words, going after the right keywords, those that are used by our, our ideal customers and that are the most likely to result in a transaction. For this reason, and for many others, we've looked at specific niches within auto insurance. We looked at the top car insurance subsectors based on keyword popularity. The total search volume, volumes for these keywords still came to over 710,000 a month. It's a huge market. So for the purpose of today, we've looked at the following areas. Temporary car insurance, multi-car, classic car, young driver insurance, motorhomes, and motorbikes. So with that being said, you're probably wondering, where are the more popular terms like cheap car insurance and compare car insurance? Well, this space is heavily dominated by comparison sites and the bigger mainstream insurers, i.e. there's nothing we didn't know already. So there's little value in dissecting that space any further. Instead, we wanted to explore the opportunity for like-minded challenger brands. Our goal was to, identify, uh, to evolve our strategic thinking in order that we could support specialist insurers, take on those bigger brands and own a decent share of the market. Therefore, we have focused on more specialist insurance niches. So having reviewed the keywords in each of these landscapes, we could then compare the performance of the main auto insurance providers. We wanted to know who was winning, who attracts the most organic traffic, what they do well that others can learn from, and where are their opportunities. Now, before we reveal our winners, we're just going to run a quick quiz. Um, which of these brands do you think ranks the highest on Google when you search for temporary car insurance? Is it Compare the Market, Vago, Viva, Danshaw, or Confused? Well, when I undertook this research, I noticed a strange anomaly. On day one, the best ranking site was Aviva, then Compare the Market, Vago, and then Confused. But I went back to look at this on another day and found a completely different set of results. Here we can see that Money Supermarket ranked number one, then Vago, then Sky, Insure Daily, and then Aviva at number five. And then just to sense check this, this, this insight, I looked on a third day and noticed that actually the original set of sites were ranking again, but in a slightly different order. Now, what this tells us is that the insurance sector is highly volatile. But Google is constantly testing its own results to ensure that they get it right. Now, any in-house SEO managers attending today will likely tell you that tracking ranks is a little bit like herding cats. But that's why it's important to understand the limitations of obsessing over individual keywords, especially when their performance can change as frequently as this. This report looks at a larger pool of keywords because that provides an amount of stability and consistency within a fluctuating market. So even though individual ranks are constantly shifting, overall, we feel that our market insights are generally robust as we're looking at this bigger picture. So now I'm going to pass back over to Dean, who's going to take you through uh, the, the, the firms that have attracted the most organic traffic for the keywords that we have identified. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dave. 
Alrighty, so first, so now like I say, we're going to look at which, who performs best for temporary car insurance keywords. So here on my screen, you'll see a little podium of first, second and third, as, as well as a, a longer list of the top 10 uh, brands ranking for temporary car insurance. So the market for temporary car insurance is being dominated by comparison websites like Compare the Market and Confuse.com, and they're claiming over half of the estimated market share. Although comparison websites are taking a high percentage of traffic, we can see that specialist providers such as Vago and Day Insure are also performing well in the search results. Combined, they have just over 16% of the market alongside Insure Daily and Temp Cover. So then we started to look at who performs best for young driver insurance keywords. And what we noticed is it's actually money saving websites that have claimed a large portion of the market share. However, this isn't too surprising considering that car insurance for young drivers is usually very expensive. And as a result, they are much more likely to research their options before committing to buying from a certain insurance provider. So these websites provide all the information young drivers require and also provide them with a list of insurers, both generic and specialist. And interestingly, there are no young driver specialists in the top 10. The only specialist provider is bought by many who are actually a pet insurance company. So we were confused by this, so we, we delved further in to research why this might be. So when we looked at their ranking pages, it's actually a blog post optimized for keywords that helps them rank in the top 10. So this indicates a missed opportunity. Should any young driver insurance specialist want to rank better, it shouldn't be that hard. If all it took was for a bought by many to produce a blog post, which is now a date, then specialist young driver insurance firms could, could do exactly the same. So then we moved on to looking at who performs best in multi-car insurance keywords. So here we can see that LV is dominating the multi-car insurance niche right now, claiming approximately a third of the market. And you can see here that Admiral is also performing well. And although both sites are not limited to automotive insurance, they heavily focus on this on their home pages. So Go Compare has also achieved a good market share, but surprisingly, Compare the Market is not as prominent in this area as we thought they might be. We then moved on to looking at classic car insurance. So unlike the previous markets, specialists are much more noticeable in the classic car insurance space. So the best performing site is Footman James. They specialise in classic car insurance and have secured a third of the market. We also, we also have appearances in the top five from Lancaster Insurance and Adrian Flux, again, another two specialist sites. So excluding the main keyword and its derivatives, the competition in this area appears to be lower, meaning that specialist websites are more likely to achieve a higher market share. And then second, but not, but not least, it's, uh, it, it's who performs best in the motorbike insurance keywords. Um, again, we see a blend of aggregators, comparison sites and generalists, but most importantly, specialists like Bennett's, Debit and MCE Insurance have a presence with a combined share of over 10% of the market. And then finally, we looked at campers and motorhome insurance, another niche area. And as you can see from the slide, we see a blend of comparison and aggregators, but specialists do have a larger presence than in some of the other areas we've looked into. So six of the top 10 are specialists with a combined share of over 30% of the market between them. So just before I hand back to Dave, um, here's some key takeaways. So this data demonstrates that leading car insurance providers and comparison websites claim the majority of the market share. However, there is room for specialists to compete against these sites. So we've already seen in the classic car and motorhome insurance areas that specialist sites are dominating the market. And there is definitely an opportunity for specialists to do the same in other markets too, even if the competition is greater. Which begs the question, what can insurance firms do better? So I'll now hand you back to Dave, who can discuss this in more detail. Cool, thank you very much. So what can insurance firms do better? Well, for those who are not familiar with link building, it's an important part of SEO strategy and success. Think of it like the online equivalent of business networking. The more connections you have, the more likely you are to receive referrals and recommendations, and the more likely you are to win business. SEO link building is much the same. The reason why links are so important is because when websites link to you, Google perceives that as an endorsement. The more links you have, the more likely Google is going to be to recommend your website to their users and in their search results pages. And so we want to encourage as many links as possible. SEMrush is uh, an SEO data suite used by the industry to gain 
vital insights on a website's SEO performance. Now, authority score is their metric used for gauging the power of a website's backlink profile. It's an indication of the quality of the links that a website has, and uh, it's on a scale of zero to 100. For instance, Wikipedia has an authority score of 96, while Yahoo have 91 and the BBC have 89. Sites with a high authority score have a better chance of ranking than sites with a lower score. For this analysis, we've reviewed the authority scores of the top auto insurance websites to get a sense of how much authority is required to rank well on Google in this sector. As you might expect, the websites at the top of our list have a relatively high uh, authority score. Most have 60 and above. However, the top 10 also consist of specialist sites like Vago, Dainshaw, and Footman James. They have a low authority score below 50, yet perform well. This goes to show us that it's not absolutely necessary to have as much authority as the likes of Compare the Market and Confuse.com to perform well in the search results. The reason why specialists can uh, own a decent slice of the market without the same level of authority is because what they lack in links, they make up for in relevance. Therefore, by investing in a good SEO strategy, specialists really do have the ability to take on bigger comparison websites. So I'm sure you're all wondering the million dollar question, how many links is it you need to rank well on Google? Now, you need to remember this is not just about quality and um, quantity, quantity matters too. When building links, it's vital that we have a view on both quantity and quality in order to build, ensure that we're building the right kind of links and not just links for the sake of it. At Receptional, we look at links across four bands of quality, lower, standard, premium, and super, and that's based on their authority scores. We use these quality bands to perform a link building needs assessment for our clients in order to ensure that we're building the right number of links at the required standard. We do this by benchmarking our clients against the sites that already perform well in search engines. So next, I'm gonna take you on a tour of that process for forecasting exactly how many links you need to perform better in search results. So firstly, if we look at the total quantity of referring domains, we can see that these sites have around 800 to nearly 1,400 links. However, not all of those are gonna be of significant quality to be able to drive SEO performance. Therefore, we can identify and potentially discount lower quality links as they'll be skewing our view on the actual amount of SEO value adding links that these sites actually have. So remember, we're defining lower quality links as those coming from domains which themselves have an SEM rush score of lower than 25. What we can see here is that a significant number of these sites have lower quality links. Vago have 36% lower links, and they ensure Footman James have around 50%. Therefore, in order to rank on Google, you may actually only need half the number of backlinks your competitors have so long as you're building sufficiently good links. So now I've added our standard and premium quality tiers into the mix as well. Standard links are generally easier to acquire, therefore we can build these links quite quickly and efficiently, whereas premium links are harder to get. So these sites are rarer and often have stricter editorial standards and guidelines. Therefore, we may require a more robust content marketing strategy to acquire those, which makes them more expensive but more valuable. Creating, uh, creating competitor benchmarks in this way enables us to develop client-specific strategies backed up by data. This is a much better way of working than just plowing away and hoping for the best. Right, looking at charts is great, but we can be even more specific than that. This, this table tells us exactly how many links we need to rank amongst the best of them when you remove those pesky lower quality links. Uh, we use this data to create performance forecasts build commercial business cases and set reasonable expectations with our clients of what results they can expect, how much it will cost, and exactly when they can expect to see a return on their investment. And I'm gonna hand back to Dean at this point, who's gonna wrap up today's webinar. Brilliant stuff, thank you very much, Dave. Alrighty, so just before we, we wrap up today's webinar, I move on to the Q&A. Um, Good SEO is a combination of keyword strategy, content, and links. So links and content form a self-perpetuating ecosystem. The better performing sites have the most links because they contain the best content that attracts links. 
and, and your SEO performance will only be as good as your weakest component. So good link, links increases the likelihood that the content will perform well in search engines. It will be viewed by more people and those viewers are likely to create more links to the content. Much like a flywheel, once it gets going, the whole cycle is continual and benefits the search performance of the whole site. So if you have great content and you're not already ranking well, a promotional campaign can help kickstart your fly, flywheel. So at the, after, after this call, we'll be sharing a copy of the ebook with all attendees, which goes into a little bit more detail around our research that we presented today. Um, if you do need support with your content strategy or have any questions um, or kind of off the back of this call, then feel free to follow up. Um, however, if anyone has any questions now, then I'm sure Dave is more than happy to answer any that you may have. So let's have a little look in the questions box. Depending on what you ask. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk a lot about link, link building what are your thoughts on on-page seo um well when we looked at the on-page seo of the sites in today's analysis uh, we realized that most of them actually have pretty good on-page seo and that's not necessarily a surprise because it's a really competitive niche and most of these top players know how important seo is and they've probably been working at this stuff for, for quite a few years as well um but if you are interested in on-page SEO and want le learning more about what, what, what goes to drive that, uh, we actually recently did an on-page SEO masterclass. I know that's available to, to view. Um, so that was recorded and it's on the reception website. I think we can share a link around uh, so you can view that as well. What we do in that masterclass is we don't look at every single possible on-page SEO element. There's too many. We focus on the ones that we think really do make the difference uh, these days. That's typically getting your keyword research nailed, getting your, your basics, your brilliant basics, right? Page titles and copy and stuff like that. It's really, really important. We talk quite a lot about content strategy from the point of view of, uh, in SEO land, people talk about, oh, a page has to have 800 words to rank well on Google. Well, we think that's nonsense. We think the most important thing is actually mobile user experience. And actually reams and reams of copy doesn't work on mobile. So actually quantity of copy is irrelevant, but it goes back to that thing of quality and user intent and who's your customer and what do they want to do on that web page. So we talk a lot about that. And the other thing we talk about is mobile uh, page speed, uh, how important the uh, core web vitals has become in the SEO mix. So those yeah. three elements are, are super critical for on-page SEO these days. Uh, and I recommend you, you check out that, that masterclass because it covers those areas in, in uh, what we think is enough detail to, to make anybody an expert. Great, very helpful. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, and then one more question. So what strategy would you recommend to build links? What's the best strategy? Um, the best strategy? Well, uh, <laughs> there's lots of strategies for building links. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, we, we do a backlink analysis uh, immediately um, for our clients. And what we do is often clean up any lower quality links that we think might be like detrimental to a site, acting like an anchor holding you back. Uh, and then there's that standard tier uh, that I mentioned earlier, where actually good outreach comms and good copywriting is generally enough to acquire uh, decent standard tier links that will, will uh, be an efficient way to progress your quantity whilst remaining within a, a decent quality band. Uh, but then inevitably there comes that point where you need to do something a bit uh, that stands out and that acquires those premium links. And we call these campaign showstoppers at Receptional. So we create a showstopper that could be a survey, with a press release, it could be um, a series of videos, it can be an in-depth um, guide, whatever it needs to be for, for the context. And we call those showstoppers and we, we use those to then promote uh, premium messaging to a premium sites. And then there's that fourth tier, that super tier, and that for me is all about traditional PR. That is the mainstream media, that is that is the press. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is, we, we, we have PR capabilities at Receptional, but we're also more than happy to collaborate with any existing PR agencies and PR teams to leverage that great work for SEO as well. So those four tiers have a strategy for each uh, and they're all as important each other, as each other in, in the grand scheme of things. There's also uh, this content-free world of technical link building we can get involved in where we can use our data and insight to be quite clever on how we can steal links or uh, ethically, obviously, uh, <laughs> and also uh, acquire links that might have been lost over time. An example of that is if you've ever migrated to a new website, if you've uh, ever had that, you know, over time, websites get these 404 pages and, and uh, we can find all the broken pages on your website and use redirects to reclaim those and reclaim the links you might have lost as a result. And that would actually come as a standard part of one of our 
technical audits as well. So there's lots we can do with or without content, uh, with or without big campaigns, small campaigns. It's just your strategy for, for any client on any budget. Brilliant stuff. Well, that is all the questions uh, we have today. But if anyone does have any further questions after this call, then our, Dave's email and my email is on the screen. Um, please get in contact with us. We will also be sharing the ebook with you afterwards. So you can also just reply to our email and ask any questions you have then. Um, yeah, and if you need any, 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 any help with your, your content strategies, then please get in touch, touch with us. Otherwise, hopefully we will see you uh, on any future webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for everyone who joined. See you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.